Hello and welcome to Startup Street. I'm Shruti Mishra and with me is Arundhati Ramanan. These are the top headlines from the startup space. Tiger Global Management is seeking $6 billion for its next venture fund. Bloomberg News reported that's less than the $8 billion some clients had initially been told the firm would likely target, the report added. The new vehicle, Private Investment Partners Fund 16, will invest in startups largely in enterprise themes and in India and a lower valuation environment, Tiger Global said in a letter to investors. E-commerce focused logistics firm Ecom Express has secured $39 million in funding from existing investors Warburg Pinkis, CDC Group and Partners. Documents sourced from Tofler showed Partners Group invested $29 million. Warburg Pinkis invested around $5.8 million and CDC Group put in the remaining amount. The Karnataka Transport Department issues a notice to stop services of all aggregator-run autos like Ola, Uber and Rapido in Bengaluru for the next three days and asked for a report on surging ride prices. The department has called the auto services run by the cab aggregators illegal under On-Demand Transportation on Technology Act 2016. Private equity firm TVS Capital has appointed Anuradha Ramachandran as a managing partner. Ramachandran has more than 22 years of experience across venture capital with Venture East, Omidyar Network and Flourish Ventures and investment banking with Lazard. The company said her appointment will bring significant thought leadership to its fund and will help scale it to the next level. The government has notified the credit guarantee scheme for startups to provide them collateral free loans up to a specified limit. In a notification, the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade said that loan debt facilities sanctioned to an eligible borrower or after October 6th would be eligible for coverage under the scene. Hackers have stolen around $100 million worth of cryptocurrency from a Binance-linked blockchain. Binance CEO Chengping Zhao said in a tweet, Zhao said the tokens were stolen from a blockchain bridge used in the Binance-linked blockchain called BNB Chain, known as Binance Smart Chain, until February. Those were the headlines that we're tracking for you this evening, but on what's brewing today and what could come as a big boost for the Indian startup ecosystem, the government has notified a credit guarantee scheme to provide collateral free loans to eligible startups. Now, according to the eligibility criteria, only those startups recognized by the DPIIT and those who have reached a stable revenue stream and not in a default situation can avail credit under the scheme. Take a look. Under the scheme, uh, specifically, we will be covering both transaction-based and will be umbrella-based. So you will have the member lending institutes can be banks and BFCs and also venture debt funds. So these are new kinds of funds that sort of do venture debt funding for startups. They will also be covered. Uh, the maximum guarantee we will be covering up to rupees 10 um, uh, crores in individual cases. Ma'am, how many startups will benefit uh, from this scheme and uh, what more is being presented for startups uh, due to this? Uh, if you see an average uh, loan size, let's say up to 5 CR, so we see around 1,500 startups will be benefiting in phase one. And after considering the popularity of the scheme and how well it goes down with the ecosystem, uh, well, we might be thinking of extending the uh, scheme further with more uh, sanctions. Moving to our trend spotting segment, online retail platforms have seen a robust 27% year-on-year growth, clocking a sale of $5.7 billion this festive sales season, as per a report by Red Seal Strategy Consultants. The festive sale week one included sale events conducted by all online retail platforms between 22nd to 30th September. And for platforms that did not run a sale during any of these dates, the report had considered BAU order volumes. To talk to us about the key highlights of the report, joining me now is Sanjay Kotari, Associate Partner at Red Seer Strategy Consultants. Uh, Sanjay, welcome back to Startup Street. Like I just mentioned, online retail platforms have seen 27% year-on-year growth. Uh, they've clocked the sale of $5.7 billion. What has led to this stellar growth? Also, the e-commerce marketplace usually holds up to three sales leading to the festival of Diwali. The first of these sales is usually the largest and typically accounts for more than 60% of the sales during the festive period. Tell me how you see the momentum going forward. Yeah, uh, thanks, Shri. Thanks for having me back here. Uh, I think the momentum has been good. Uh, we did see issues around demand slowdown and inflation around the beginning of last quarter. Uh, but uh, post uh, August and early September, we started uh, seeing a uptick in consumer sentiments and demand. From our consumer surveys that we had published earlier, I think uh, the consumers were waiting for for the Diwali sale to begin to you know purchase online. 
Uh, in fact, I think we had projected 5.9 billion worth of GMV uh, during the festive sale one, and the industry has almost done uh, you know 5.7, which is which is bang on target, right? So yeah, overall, I think the 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 start of the festival has been good, as you okay. said. Uh, this is gen this first step sale one generally contributes to sixty percent, and uh, with a uh, you know five point seven billion kind of a start, I think the momentum going into the festival is pretty good. Okay, Sanjay, let's talk about the big trends. The report highlights mobile as a category continues to lead GMV share and is contributing to forty one percent of the GMV, uh, translating to fifty six thousand uh, mobile sold per hour. And on the other hand, fashion has contributed to 20% of GMV, which grew 48% year on year from last festive season. Will mobile and fashion continue to drive GMV growth going forward? Sure. Uh, so if you see the trends over the last couple of years, right, the penetration of uh, smartphones specifically in, in, in India, you know, was lower when we started, uh, you know, the last decade. Uh, last couple of years, especially post-COVID, we saw much higher penetration of smartphones. Uh, this was further. Uh, uh, this received further push post, you know, geo ventured into telecom space. Uh, so yes, we have seen, uh, uh, you know, people who wanted to buy mobiles have already bought the higher penetration of smartphones, etc. And we have seen a, a slightly downward trajectory of mobile sale because it, it's now mostly replacement sale and not, uh, hmm. you know, uh, uh, the fresh mobiles being bought, right? So we would continue to see mobile uh, uh, mobiles category contribution to overall online GMB come down. Okay. But since festive sale is one of the largest event, you'd always see people waiting to buy that expensive mobile. So in terms of uh, festive sale, I think mobile would still continue to dominate the category uh, amongst the categories. Okay. Uh, for fashion, I think the growth has been pretty tremendous, right? Especially with players focusing on tier two and you know mm -hmm. value commerce. Lower ASP items like fashion tend to be the first choice for people who want to start on, uh, you know, the online journey. Okay. Yeah, so I think fashion has has been the larger driver. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting points you've made there. Uh, but Sanjay, you know, while the Flipkart group continues to lead the market, Misho has emerged as the second largest in terms of order volume ahead of Amazon. Does this mean that social commerce has arrived as a mainstream competitor? Sure. Uh, the way to look at Misho is more from a horizontal angle than a social commerce angle because currently I think uh, uh, while Misho started as a social commerce platform, most of its current sale doesn't come from the B2B model, uh, uh, from the uh, seller model, right? Most of its current GMB comes from the B2C model, which is, uh, you know, as similar as other uh, uh, other e-com players. So uh, the way to think about this is, uh, you know, value commerce or people purchasing for value online has, has arrived, right? So uh, specifically with India being a T2 heavy market, you'd see people wanting to buy, uh, you know, value products online, uh, which, which not just means higher okay. in brands, but also, you know, day-to-day -day items. So I think that's, that's what the story is. Uh, hmm. Rather people buying, people coming online to buy value, value products. Okay, okay. Sanjay, picking up from uh, something that you mentioned earlier, uh, shopper base has increased by 24% year on year from festive sale week one of calendar year 21, uh, with 65% of shoppers coming from tier two plus cities, which is Misho's sweet spot, uh, so to speak. Also in terms of average order value, have tier two cities started contributing more than the metros? Sure. Uh, I think uh, when you talk about India as a market, the next wave of growth would always have been P2Cities, right? Mm. Uh, we are seeing that happen with e-commerce as well. Now the shopper growth rate, if you see, would continue to be high in P2 because uh, online penetration, uh, especially online retail penetration is still very low in P2 markets, below 5%. So yes, you will see T2 contribute uh, more to the shoppers as well as GMB growth. Okay, all right. One final question, Sanjay. You know, with the advent of 5G, uh, how do you view the video commerce space and the future of online retail? Sure. So live commerce or video commerce is definitely interesting, right? It solves mm -hmm. for uh, two major issues, especially for the T2 markets. First is trust and second is discovery, right? Trust for people who have never purchased online. So if, uh, if there's a way, uh, if someone who knows you, or if someone you may know, if a local celebrity or a uh, local influencer and process a product, it's all for the trust issue. Then there's discovery, which means imagining, uh, imagine somebody shopping uh, with a catalog of, uh, you know, more, more than five lakhs to 10 lakhs. So it becomes difficult for people to choose from. So here, live commerce helps discovery as well. So with the advent of 5G, obviously we see, uh, we believe the uh, it will improve the browsing speeds and will definitely help uh, live commerce and uh, 
uh, okay. and overall online retail in, in general. All right, Sanjay, we've completely run out of time, but many thanks for joining us on Startup Street, and thank you for taking us to the key highlights of the report. Thank you. Thanks, Shruti. All right, moving on, on what's brewing, clean beauty marketplace Vanity Wagon has raised around $2 million in pre-Series A funding round at a valuation of $8 million. Co-led by Agility Venture Partners and Lotus Herbals, the pre-Series A funding round also saw participation of Inflection Point Ventures, Venture Catalyst and notable HNIs. To talk to us about the clean beauty space and the road ahead at Vanity Wagon, joining us now is its co-founder and CEO, Pratik Ruhel, and also joining me is my colleague, Arundhati. Pratik, welcome to Startup Street. Now, Vanity Wagon is a one-stop shop for clean beauty and wellness products, and you claim to be the first information-oriented clean beauty ecosystem in India. What do you mean by this? And if you could elaborate on your offerings. Hi, Shruti. Thanks, firstly, for having me here. Uh, and, and yeah, it's it's just very interesting time for beauty in general. Yes. Uh, I think the, the country is moving very well towards clean beauty and beauty. A lot of big players entering the market. But so from an information point of view, uh, when we say we are the largest information-led platform, the idea is to make sure customers understand the value of product, something which Sanjay was mentioning us some time back. So uh, value commerce, right? So you understand what the product is all about and then only you shop it or the other way is you simply just shop on a certain discount or a, or a certain uh, additional pricing that you get. So, so we've focused on the other part, which is letting customers know through various channels. We do it through our blogs. We do it through vlogs, a lot of partnerships at affiliate levels. Uh, and yeah, we have our own magazine called Vanity Dossier. So a lot happening there in terms of informing the customer what they're buying. Right. Um, hi, Pratik, Arundhati here. Now, with the fresh funds that you've raised, you plan to invest in brand building, grow your private label portfolio, offline retail, and a lot more. So elaborate a little bit on your fund allocation plans. Hi, Arundhati. So, uh, so I think fund allocation for us is a lot about what's, what, what we're trying to build in the next uh, two years, principally. Uh, the idea is to build a robust uh, engine where everything is taken care of from the top part, so which includes marketing, brand building, uh, technology is very key for us. So we are, of course, a digital first commerce platform. So we invest a lot of energy and time behind technology. And I think the last bit of our investment is also going to go a lot towards brand building uh, in terms of not only Vanity Wagon, but also partner brands. Uh, we are getting into a space where we are uh, now uh, big enough to understand the value these integral brands have with us. And we are also investing our our time, energy, and capital to them. So, so I think that's that's a couple of areas where we are focused on. Sure. And and our team also tends to be a very large investment for vanity because uh, we understand the value of, of human power in driving these startups, these platforms. So I think uh, that's okay. where most of our funds are going to go. All right, Pratik, like you mentioned, you also plan to use the investments to strengthen your omni-channel strategy, you know, co-own more clean beauty brands. You already have boarded, what, 350-plus brands on the portal with 15% international brands. I believe you also have launched five new international brands in India. Any new partnerships you can, uh, you know, talk to us that are in the pipeline and what is your inorganic play? Sure. So I think uh, what we realized in the last couple of years is you can't just be a platform and expect to become a larger enterprise in general. Uh, we are, uh, while understanding the value of brands, and you mentioned Omnichannel, so we have uh, we are investing our our uh, strength into building these brands. So a few interesting things that are happening. Of course, we launched a a, a brand not too long ago with with Anita Asanandani, which is called Better Beauty. Uh, we are also working with a couple of more celebrities to come up with celebrity-led uh, beauty brands, uh, again, across the categories, so skincare, hair care, and makeup. Uh, besides this, on the international brand front, we are uh, we have just brought in a brand called Love Indus to India, which, is, uh, which of course, we are, we are taking care of out here. And we're also working on a couple of more partnerships to bring in uh, better, more powerful brands to the Indian consumers. So, align on all of that. All right, and it is the fest uh, festive season. So what kind of sales are you expecting this festive season? Yeah, I think, again, very, very interesting and very uh, good times for, for commerce in general. Uh, but yeah, I think we are expecting, as, as always, to put in more efforts, to put in more capital behind reaching a larger user base. Uh, again, tier two being a very strong market, we are working very aggressively on building that for us. Uh, so on a number front, we are looking at a growth of at least 5x 
from last year, which is in general what we follow as a trend every year uh, in this period. And I think beyond this, uh, we would be looking to hit our our target of become, becoming a 30 crore plus company in terms of revenue by by next year March. All right, Pratik, we're completely out of time, but we wish you all the best on this journey going forward. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thanks for having me. Thank you. On that note, it's time for us to head into a short break. Coming up on the other side, homegrown direct-to-consumer beauty and personal care brand Vow Skin Science is betting big on the D2C opportunity in the country. We bring you their growth blueprint on the other side, so stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still with us on Startup Street. And sticking to our focus on clean beauty, homegrown direct-to-consumer beauty and personal care brands in India expanding their presence across cities with hair and skincare brands like Wow Skin Science betting big on the D2C opportunity in the country. Now, Wow Skin Sciences, which raised $48 million in June this year, is backed by investors like GIC and Chris Capital. It has also appointed actors like Karthik Aryan, Rashmika Mandana, Karina Kapoor Khan, and Bhumi Pednekar as its brand ambassadors. I caught up with the company's co-founder, Manish Chaudhary, to find out more about the company's game plan to stay ahead in the beauty and personal care space in India. Take a look. India's direct-to-consumer market for beauty and personal care saw over 800 new brands in 2021 alone. With a pandemic-led digital shift, the sector saw funding grow three times with over $2 billion invested via 105 deals. This according to a report by PGA, Shiprocket and CII. Founded in 2015, Bengaluru-based Wow Skin Sciences is also making a niche for itself in the highly competitive space. The company, which claims to be the first adapters of the internet for skincare products, has seen 100% growth on a yearly basis. The firm is now aiming to breach the 1,000 crore rupee revenue mark in the next 24 months. We were the first adapters of the internet uh, for, for FMCG, healthcare, as well as uh, skincare products. Uh, seen 100% year-on-year growth, but that was at a smaller base. Uh, but anything beyond 50% plus, why, why is something what we aspire to do? You know, 400 plus crore brand today in this country. Only this is domestic sales, doesn't include our export sales. Building uh, or reaching a thousand plus mark within the next 18 to 24 months. Uh, been, uh, it's been a steep, it's a meteoric rise to the D2C uh, ecosystem. I'd like to be unfair, but uh, COVID was uh, something which was which was a booster for us. When we crossed the thousand plus uh, revenue thresholds, that's when you can say the brands arrived is pretty large. While the COVID-induced lockdown was a huge booster for the D2C market, Wow Skin Sciences said that the online market is currently witnessing a fatigue where consumers are now looking to go out to buy again. And with an aim to keep the consumer coming back for more, the startup is banking and investing most of its money into expanding its offline presence over the next 18 to 24 months. We are really banking big or all our investments are going into building our offline presence uh, and our own website. Uh, offline is contributing close to around 15% of our revenues of this com uh, currently. We're looking at at least reaching at 35 to 40% uh, of our overall portfolio mix of online versus offline. Uh, but what sells online doesn't mean we'll sell offline. There's a strategy, investments are different there. Uh, that's something what we are looking at uh, investing in the next 18, 24 months. Uh, really fighting in those shelf spaces where all our incumbent uh, competitors sit have been up, have been presently sitting for close, few of them a century, half, uh, 50 years plus. Uh, we are competing with and that needs investments. We have an uh, uh, ambitious plan of reaching 600 plus crores this year. Uh, obviously, we have inflation issues. We have a few of these midterm uh, issues, but we're too small as a brand to really worry about these issues. Uh, but 600 plus domestic sales is what we're looking at uh, an annualized revenue at. Uh, that's where we are. We are backing, uh, banking or we are hoping to have a very good uh, festive season to... Uh, to get us into those kind of trajectory numbers, but uh, would have been in a, a much happier place if the macros were much better from where we expected. With a wide range of health and beauty products, 
Wow Skin Sciences is currently seeing 45% of its revenues coming in from its hair care range and the rest of it from its skin and nutrition offerings. Best selling products uh, where we revolutionized this category or made it interesting is the apple cider vinegar shampoo. Uh, we, uh, our second best seller is the onion hair oil series or the onion hair care uh, series. But you're seeing skincare having a rapid growth at our end, at least over the last 12 months. Uh, or during the COVID period, we've seen consumers really pamper themselves there. Uh, that's something which is interesting. We're looking at also strengthening our nutrition side of business. Uh, we have a pretty narrow range uh, currently, but we're looking at building uh, a pretty solid range uh, of products uh, which 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 are meaning for a con consumer today, right? With a flurry of companies taking to the D2C beauty and personal care market, the sector has seen consolidation as large players seek to own a pie of this lucrative segment. Wow Skin Sciences says it's not open to be acquired for now and plans to hit the public markets in the next two to three years. We are not looking at selling out. Uh, we are looking at, uh, we have a North Star of at least listing this company in the next two to three years. Uh, again, I've told you that's a great opportunity. It's a, not a one uh, one player market takes it all. Uh, I think there's a room for quality four or five new age companies like us in the same sector doing it because the population is huge. Uh, personal care beauty is something new to consumers in this country to use on a daily basis. Uh, we, are, we are not open for acquisitions. We're here to build something long lasting. We have a playbook which we have built internally. Uh, whatever we can do internally in a quick span, we'll, we'll do it organically at our end. Uh, where we think we can short circuit that process is when we'll use the inorganic route. Let's say we do it over 10 is easier than having 50 in you, where you can go all over the place. Uh, that is something what you will look at us build. So you'll see a lot of exciting new brands coming out next quarter, uh, which will be again clutter breaking, new to the Indian consumer. The D2C sector in India, which was valued at $33 billion in 2020, is projected to reach $100 billion by 2025, according to Avendis Capital. The D2C beauty and personal care segment alone is expected to reach $4.4 billion in India, with a whopping CAGR of 29% by 2025. In Mumbai, Arundhati Ramanan. And with that, it is a wrap on this edition of Startup Street. More news and updates coming up on the other side. Stay tuned.